Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Yesterday I got a hold of a very early build of Laka for the Asus Tinkerboard and I want to show it off in this video. If you're not familiar with Laka, it's pretty much a standalone operating system based on RetroArch. So what you're getting is a retro gaming front end for the Asus Tinkerboard. Finally. Now I've been really disappointed with the manufacturer's support for the Asus Tinkerboard, so I'm glad these guys got a hold of a couple boards and they're able to build something like this. If you're not familiar with the Asus Tinkerboard, I'll leave links in the description to a few videos I've done. Now here's the operating system. I have it on the black theme. I'm going to head over to information and show you which build this is. Now, like I said, this is a very early build for the Asus Tinkerboard. There are some things that aren't working in here. But overall, I've had a great experience. One thing I wasn't able to get launching was Dreamcast games, but I'm sure that's going to be fixed in the future. There are a couple great operating systems out there for the Asus Tinkerboard. They're all made by third parties, but nothing that supports retro gaming like this. This is a retro gaming front end. I have a few emulators installed. Like I said, I couldn't get Dreamcast working, but this is a very early build, and I'm sure the devs are going to be working on this because they've got it up and running. And in my opinion, this could be really big for the Asus Tinkerboard. When they get these bugs worked out, this is going to be a great option for single board computer retro gaming. Now, right here, this is Game & Watch. I just wanted to show you. You can download this directly from within Laka, the games and everything. So this video is just a quick look. I'm going to test out an N64 game, a PlayStation 1 game, and a PSP game. And if I'm able to get my hands on any more of these builds here, I'm going to test out as much as possible with this board. I want to test some Dreamcast when it's fixed, Sega Saturn, all kinds of emulators. But for now, this is what I got working, and I wanted to show it to you. This is using the PPSSPP core. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward and turn the music off because it's copywritten music. The FPS is listed in the lower left hand corner. This game is supposed to run at 30 FPS on the original PSP. I tried to install God of War, but it's not recognizing the file type. I'm pretty sure the Asus Tinkerboard doesn't have the power to run God of War Chains of Olympus anyway. I did do a quick test on Monster Hunter, Little Big Planet, and Kingdom Hearts, and they all run great. I also tested Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition, and that's another one of those harder games to emulate with a PSP emulator. It doesn't run at full speed, it's pretty laggy. I'm just excited to see Locker running on the Asus Tinkerboard in a standalone fashion. Next up, I want to take a quick look at Bloody Roar 2 running on the PS1 emulator. The Asus Tinkerboard definitely has the power to run these at full speed, pretty much any PS1 game, so I wasn't surprised to see this running this well. FPS is listed in the lower left hand corner. And finally, I'm going to be testing N64 using GoldenEye 007. I did try Conker's Bad Fur Day, but it's not running great right now. This is using Mupin for the emulator, and I set the core to auto, so I believe it's using the Glide 64 core. But it's running pretty well. The FPS is also listed in the lower left hand corner. Now I'm not exactly sure what the FPS was on the original N64 hardware. I've heard mixed things. I've heard it was 20, I've heard it was 25, and I've heard it was 30. In my experience, I think it was around 20 to 25. It had to be.
So that's it for this video, guys. Just wanted to give you a quick look at Laka running on the Asus Tinkerboard. Now, there's tons of customizations within Laka. You can change the background color. We can change the background wallpaper or dynamic wallpaper. There's a few to choose from in here. I really like the simple snow with the black behind. It looks really cool. But there's a few other options, and you can also change the color if you need to. Go in here to menu theme. There we go. So overall, it does run pretty good at the moment. I cannot wait until they get some of these bugs worked out and we'll get a stable release for the Asus Tinkerboard. Like I said, it's been a long time coming to get something like this for our Tinkerboard. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching.